Hello biology students! Today we're going to be talking about karyotypes. How can we look at all the chromosomes of an organism and learn about it? Alright, let's jump in. So when we talk about a karyotype, we have to talk about what a normal one looks like. And scientists will move the chromosomes in a particular arrangement to know if it's normal. So when we talk about chromosomes, we have to remember that chromosomes are not usually in pairs. Right, called homologous pairs. The word homologous means same size, same shape, and similar genetics. Right, homo meaning same. And so, for instance, this chromosome pair called homologous pair number one, I get one of these chromosomes from biological mom and one of these chromosomes from biological dad. Right, notice that this is the biggest pairing of chromosomes. So we ordered them from the largest pair all the way down to 22, the smallest pair. We'll talk about this weird X and Y in a second. So um, again, I should see a chromosome, one from biologic mom, one from biological dad, mom, dad, mom, dad, mom, dad, mom, dad, for every one of these, right? 23 pairs um, for a total of 46 total chromosomes for a normal human um, karyotype. Now, we have some names for the pairs. The first 22 pairs, which is why I was focused on 1 through 22, are called autosomes. They are the normal chromosomes. Normal being that they are going to have things from hair color, eye color, uh, how tall you are, etc. Then we have the last pair, X and Y. X and Y are called the sex chromosomes, and they're going to be one of our major focuses of today. Let's continue learning more. So when we're thinking about what X and Y mean, determining the sex of an organism, we really are referring to biological sex, right? And so the combination of having one X and one Y leads to biological male. The combination of having an X and an X leads to biological female. Now notice if I'm looking at the actual structures, the X is much bigger, much, much bigger than the Y chromosome. Y is very tiny looking um, and as long as I have a Y chromosome I'm going to be biological male. We'll talk more about that in class. So if I was looking at this as an example right remember and if my question was what is the biological sex of this karyotype um, I would look through right I see numbers 1 through 22 those pairs Remember, I have a copy from mom and a copy from dad for each of them. But if I'm looking for what the biological sex is, i got to look at the 23rd pair, this X and Y, that are almost always going to be at the bottom right of the karyotype. And here I see on the X, I know it's really tiny, there's two chromosomes. And if we're looking on Y, normally Y would be very tiny, but I don't see anything there. So because I have two X's, what is this person? Dun, da, da, da. It is a biological female, XX. All right. Now, is this person have normal chromosomes everywhere else? Yes. They have two pairs for everything else, meaning they are biologically normal for the number of chromosomes. Now, here, we're going to only see in this example 6 through 23. There are chromosomes 1 through 5 not being shown, so we can see better. We're only showing 6 through 23. Again, I want you to practice determining biological sex. Remember, where do we look for that? Oh, the 23rd pair, the sex chromosomes, always on the bottom right. And here, this time, I see a big chromosome labeled X and a little one labeled Y. So this is XY. So this is a biological male, XY. Now, again, the last step we're going to do is, is there anything seemingly abnormal about any of the sets 6 through 23? See six two 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 two, and then I get to twenty one. And how many chromosomes are there? Three. Remember, these are homologous pairs, meaning just two. So here is the abnormal thing. It's the fact that there's a triplet, a tri amount trisomy. So we call this trisomy 21, meaning three chromosome 21s. This is an example of an abnormal karyotype, and this is exactly what scientists do under the microscope. They look for any extra or missing chromosomes on any of these pairings. This one's a really well-known one that we're going to talk about for a second. 
This one is actually known as Down syndrome. Down syndrome refers to having this extra chromosome. And people with Down syndrome will frequently have very similar features because they always have that same extra chromosome. It tends to lead to having extra proteins because of you having those extra genes, which will cause some of those features both on the person's face and sometimes in their height to be similar. It is very important to note that people with Down syndrome are quite smart and they definitely know that they are a little different but they are super kind and they are super able to do very much the same things that the average person can do. So just because someone has a genetic difference doesn't mean that they are actually all that different. We'll talk more about this in class. But again, this one you have to know it frequently shows up both on our final exam, our test, and the SOL. Trisomy 21 is known as Down syndrome. We can also talk about how people tend to get this extra chromosome. And the fact of the matter is a lot of it leads to the age of the mom. If I look at the data here, if a mom had a baby at age 28, there's a one in a thousand chance that the baby will have Down syndrome. If the mom has a baby at 38, there's a one in 200 chance. So what's the trend here? As the mother gets older, the chance of having a baby with Down syndrome goes up, which is why older women are considered slightly higher risk. Why is that? Well, the cause of the wrong chromosome number, having too many or too few, is because of meiosis not going totally right. So during meiosis, the chromosomes will line up in the middle, meet in the middle is called metaphase, and then they'll try to move apart, which is called, moving apart is, anaphase. But if I'm looking here in anaphase, I see something going wrong, right? Right there. The chromosomes aren't properly separating. This has a fancy word called non-disjunction. And because they're not separating properly, some of the egg or the sperm end up getting extra chromosomes, here shown at the top, or not enough. We call extra chromosome, ending up with three, trisomy. We call ending up with just one, monosomy. So lots of different types of chromosomal mutations exist, sometimes extra, missing. We can even have chunks of chromosomes missing or extra. We'll practice looking at karyotypes together in class. Great job, guys.